The journey to get here was not easy and it's far from over because as you can see, I got a lot of work to do down here. Oh man, so naive. At the time, I was very excited about this all and I assumed I could finish the renovation in just under a few weeks. How wrong I was. I'm still very excited about it all, but I'm exhausted. For my entire life, I've had a strong connection to nature. From plants to frogs to fish and everything in between, I just can't get enough. I also have what could be described as a compulsion to make things. It doesn't really matter what it is, but I just don't feel right unless I'm creating something. I guess you could say it's in my DNA. Over the years, nearly every aspect of my life has changed, except for my desire to create things and my love for animals. In fact, I've had some iteration of an animal room, which is essentially the combination of those two things since 2006. Houdini here is one of the last remaining relics from that early bygone era. Fast forward to current day where I've been able to reach millions on this topic and I get to do it for a living. Truly, that was never my intent to start. I really just wanted to share my passion. And as I share my passion, I'm always looking for ways to improve, teach more, and just produce overall better content. And of course, this all occurs within the animal room. The YouTube version of this began in my parents' basement, then in a small basement of my own, and now this. With this space, I was finally given the opportunity to design and build something specifically for this purpose. Every room prior to this more or less was just an attempt to retrofit something existing. So I set out to create the most beautiful and functional area possible using the skills I've gained over the years. I've dabbled in pretty much every home renovation you could think of, but I grossly underestimated the amount of work needed to finish a basement of this size. It's a lot. And it's not like the room came as a blank slate. I had to spend a few days doing demolition and cleanup, which set me back from the start. After adjusting framing, removing shelves, vinyl tiles, and carpeting, I was finally able to get a proper look at my canvas. It was very barren, and I'm glad I got to start from zero. Watching this back though makes me feel kind of weird. I knew how I wanted to design this room long before I ever saw it, and a lot of that is dictated by the tanks themselves. Like water on the floor. If you're keeping fish tanks, it's completely unavoidable, and I ruined the floors at the previous house. I don't want to do that again. I had full intentions to use epoxy because if done correctly, it's a great option. That said, many DIYers skip the most important step, which is grinding the concrete so it will accept the primer. It's a very messy process and the diamond grinder will beat you up. You probably can't tell here, but it wants to travel wherever it pleases and you have to keep it in check. Using epoxy indoors, even if it's low VOC and 100% solids, still sketches me out, especially around the animal. I wanted to apply the epoxy before we lived in the house, but it was scheduled as one of the last steps in the process, so I continued onward. Framing is always a fun step because you start to see the skeleton of everything, and it's pretty straightforward. Engineering the spaces around the windows though was really annoying. It was about mid-October when I was doing all of this, so it was still fairly warm outside, except in the evening. Even so, the temperatures remained very consistent down here, and even more so once I added the insulation. And the great thing is, is that since this is mostly underground, it's going to be really easy to keep things comfortable down here, whether it's really hot or really cold outside. For example, we had a few days where it was down to about negative 15, and it was staying a comfortable 76 degrees in here without any issue. Anyway, adding the drywall was one of the steps I dreaded most. Installing it on the wall, whatever, that's easy enough. Carrying it from the garage to here is a different story though because it's pretty far away. Eighty feet to be exact. Now imagine that 45 times with each one weighing 50 pounds. The first 15 are easy and then they just keep getting heavier and heavier the more it goes on. Not to mention all of the mudding. I hate this process so much that I didn't even film it at all. Well, that is other than a few air pockets I had to repair after sanding. Sanding also was really annoying, but thankfully a friend let me borrow a sanding wand which greatly sped things up and reduced the amount of dust. Even so, it took a while, but once complete, I could finally get to painting. The second the primer went up, things really came full circle. 
Of course, I painted it the signature green color, but I made a huge mistake. I decided to go with semi-gloss because it's really easy to clean. This ended up exposing some of my drywall seams, and I hated that. Plus, it also unnecessarily reflected light. I thought I was being slick, but it was a bad decision on my part. I ended up repainting everything with eggshell, which made it look much better. I should also mention that between those steps, I had an electrician come to do all of the wiring and add the outlets. I can replace receptacles and do basic stuff all day, but I don't trust myself to wire an entire addition. I decided on black for everything to reduce unnecessary reflections. The room is wired into multiple circuits so that it doesn't get overloaded, and we have GFCIs in the appropriate spots. By this point in the renovation, we were already living in the house, which meant that I had to deviate from my plans to do the epoxy floors. I decided instead to use waterproof vinyl tiles. These will hold up perfectly well against water, and truthfully, they're probably a better look than epoxy. For best results, I had to address some inconsistencies in the floor. Self-leveling concrete made it really easy to level everything out. After it cured, I cleaned up debris, rolled out the underlayment, and installed the tiles. I was, and still am, so excited with how they tie into everything. And much like the drywall, I had to lug 55 boxes from that garage into here. The doors and trim also really tied everything together, but I didn't film much of that process because I was really burnt out. By this point, I'd been working for four months straight and couldn't seem to catch a break. That series of bad events actually occurred in the beginning of 2022 though, so I was way worn out before any of this began. I can deal with a lot of stress, but there were so many things going on simultaneously that I was getting overwhelmed. The market trends weren't looking good, so I was trying my best to rush all of the animals over here, as well as fix up the old house to get it to sell. Naturally, we also bought a fixer-upper, which is what we wanted, but because of that, we weren't really able to move everything in here right away. And it was just problem after problem. I also was getting really stressed out about the channel. I was so focused on getting everything moved and finishing this room that the videos were often an afterthought, which I hate. I love doing this, and I want each video to be better than the last. That was just impossible when I physically didn't have the energy to do it and when I didn't have the space while everything's under construction. It's ironic because I'm doing all of this largely to create more and further the content, but it's been having the opposite effect. And one of the things I struggled with most at the previous house was organization. I felt very smothered there for a while and I thought things were gonna get better, but typically things get worse before they get better. And that was the case here up until about last week. As I'm sure you can imagine, organization is still pretty much non-existent. So as I'm working, I can never find my tools, which wastes my time. Is it in that box? Maybe this one. Or upstairs in the pantry. Who knows, your guess is as good as mine. There were actually a few times where I went out and bought a second tool because I couldn't find it, and so at some point it will show up and I'll have duplicates. All of this really makes me miss my workbench. And now that's something that, looking back, I probably should have set up as soon as we moved in, but I figured, oh, this will only take a few weeks and then I can take time to properly do that so I don't have to do it twice, but as you can see now, it was a big mistake. I know it all sounds trivial now and it's all problems that I brought upon myself, but I was really struggling through this all and I had so many thoughts going through my head. Why did you do You're this? ruining the channel with content You're about over your the head. animals make it You're not going to be able to sell it house. You still didn't even start. Enough, it. enough. I had to keep telling myself throughout this entire process, I know what I'm capable of, I set out to do something, and this is only temporary. So I kept pushing through. The next order of business was to install the drop ceiling. Now much like everything else, I couldn't just go and put it up. No, of course not. Story of my life. I always got to do something very specific that needs to be customized. I wanted tiles with the highest soundproofing properties as possible, but they only came in white. I needed black, so I had to meticulously paint each one. On top of that, installing a drop ceiling is quite the process. I can't complain about the results though, especially once the lights went in. They really light this place up, and I actually need to get a dimmer because I don't want it this bright all the time. You've seen that I installed a wooden feature wall behind where I'll film tutorials. I thought this would be a cool addition. I added track lighting as well, but I'm not done over here just yet. Besides that, there really wasn't much else to do but bring the animals in.
and welcome to the new animal room. I'm like lost for words right now. Everything else in the video now, that was more or less scripted, but this is my genuine tour of this room. I haven't really been in here since it's been this clean. I just cleaned it up right before this and just something about filming it right now. It's just making me feel different, you know? I've been working up to this for so long and I, I guess it's finally real. I guess that's what it is because I've just been sort of hiding out in the shadows with it, so to speak, because I don't really like to show stuff until it's done. And with this, you know, I, I haven't been showing it on the channel really. There's been glimpses of it here and there and I did a few videos on the progress of it, but nothing to this extent. It's finally hit me that this chapter of my life, this chapter of constantly working and doing renovations on this space is more or less over. And it's bittersweet because I'm definitely ready to move on from it. I'm tired of lugging materials around and doing all of that stuff. And I really just want to focus on the artistry of these tanks and producing the best quality content I possibly can from this space. I mean, it should be very evident that this room is essentially my love letter to this hobby. It's been such a part of my life, such a part in shaping who I am. All of these beautiful animals that I feel very blessed to be able to look after, to be able to make these awesome ecosystems within this space. And of course, to be able to share it with each and every single one of you. It's not something that I take lightly. I feel very privileged to be in this situation. I work hard, obviously, but a lot of it, I guess, was luck because I kind of hit the algorithm early on. It's just every aspect of this turned out better than I could have ever imagined. The floor, I'm glad that the epoxy didn't go through because I like this better. The ceiling, I wasn't sure how it would be with black. I thought it might make the room look small, but I actually feel like it makes the room look bigger. It's the absence of light. It almost feels like the, the space just keeps going upward. The lighting, Finally doesn't feel like a dungeon in here. It's felt like a cave for, you know, as long as we've had this space. I just got these put in last weekend and I really like it. Of course, the studio area over here, still a good bit of work to do on it. Uh, gonna put some sort of cool logo design back there. Talk about that in a future video. I'm also gonna put LED lights around the outside of this. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to engineer that yet though, so I held off because I didn't want to rush to do anything. Got the track light up there. I'm still going to have to use a key light, but that should help as far as filming goes. I've got one of the IKEA tanks there and the other one is in my office area to the right. That's what this rack is for. I got to finish it up. Otherwise, I would have moved them over to there. but. I'll put another one of those to its right, so all the IKEA tanks will go there. Working on some new stuff for over here that we'll talk about at another time. And then right here, I'm gonna put the Suriname toad rack. So you figure it's about the same size as this one. We'll go to the left, and so those will come out to about here. And then I'll cap it off on the end with the 150 gallon cube, as well as a few other setups. And then on this side, you won't see the back of this. It will just be more tanks. So basically it'd be kind of like a fish store set up if you want to put it that way, where there's these aisles of tanks. And then you walk through into here. I'll likely do the same thing right on this side, but it will have to be slightly different because I think if I do the same width of tanks to here, it's just going to take up a little too much space into the studio area. So talk about that at a later time. And then I want to put a bench that goes basically the entire length of this walkway. So it'll be maybe right in the middle here, right? And <laughs> my friend, he said it would look like a locker room. And I laughed because it's kind of true, but you figure there's just a bench that goes the whole length down here and you could just sit and look and observe every tank within this space with ease. And 
Of course, we've got Samson down there because his tank recently broke. I talked about that in last week's video. And that was kind of, you know, I was pretty upset about that. But I, I will say that was kind of just like, okay, that's it. That's got to be the last of these mishaps. And I, I don't like to harp on that stuff. I don't want it to be like I'm complaining or obviously I sort of did, but you just got to understand this has been such an undertaking for me. And I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, but it was, it was a lot. It really was. But I'm so excited to share this journey with you. And if you missed two weeks ago, that video, it doesn't end either. Got a whole area back in here as well. I added some cabinets on the right here. We've got a mini fridge, which is where I keep all the frozen food for the animals. As well as some stuff like that. Got all of the fish food, reptile food, supplements, different things like that. I have to add more shelves in there because it's kind of a waste of space as it is. Water treatments and so on. You know, just various things that I use to maintain this space I have in there. I've got the quarantine area for the fish all right in here. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit to accommodate some salt water tanks. So I didn't really do that much with that. All of the isopods up in here. And then of course we've got the water treatment down here. So I have the RO running up through the ceiling. It's plumbed directly into the sink right here. And then I just turn a little valve on under the sink whenever I want it to run, fills these up. And then I can create the salt water. If you want to see more about this space specifically, I'd recommend checking out that video because I go into pretty great detail as to how I made it. But it's just every single area and aspect of this room. I want it to be beautiful. I want it to be functional. And down to the windows here, right? I built them so that all the terrariums can sit on them and it just creates a nice little shelf. I thought it was really cool and it just makes it so that I don't have to make a shelf or take up space in the room. I can literally just put them on these windows and call it a day. I also turned this beam into a little bit of a feature. I feel like it was a better use of it definitely than creating a bulkhead or anything like that. The second you walk in from the right here, tanks wrapping all around all around back here. They'll stop at the door, come back up, tanks on the end, wrap around of course, either stop here or you know, something will come out. I don't know exactly how I'll do it, but something will come out. I don't know if I want to put something on this wall. I probably won't since it's so close to the studio area, but then I'll definitely do stuff here and with the saltwater tank, I don't know if I'm going to keep it in this room. I think I might put it in my office because the stand doesn't match anything else. And I could take the time to build a new one or reface this, anything like that. But I actually, I don't mind the white. It's just, I, I feel like it doesn't fit in this space, right? So the easiest solution would be to move this into my office once I finish that up and then just do a different saltwater tank in here because I've been having pretty good success with that one so far. Do a full update on it at a later time, but it's pretty much how we're looking down here. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show you the bathroom right in here. It's awesome to have one directly onto the animal room. Found it very convenient and did a different paint color in there, obviously. Standard layout. I want to get some more lighting up in there. Butcher block on there looking good. Got to adjust a few things down there. And I'm also going to put tiles all the way up to the ceiling as a backsplash. Cause every time I use the sink, it splashes like crazy. So to help preserve things. And I also of course got to finish that fish tank. I know that it's been a long and drawn out process to get to this point. I wish I could have got done with it all sooner, but as I look around and see that I did every single little thing myself, except for the electrical and the lights, it's a pretty cool feeling. And there are a few things that I need to tweak and finish up here, but overall, I feel pretty good showing it to you in this state. 
And from this space, I hope to take Serpa Design to the next level because I feel like I've been held back for many years now. I've wanted to do more elaborate projects, more extensive demos, and so on, and the previous space really just wasn't conducive to any of that. And this all more or less is a lifelong dream come true. It's a result of years upon years of dedicated, concentrated effort into a craft that I thoroughly enjoy. I never could have imagined that I would have ended up here, but I have each and every single one of you to thank for this. Without your views, your likes, your subscriptions, your comments, all of it, none of this would be possible. So from the bottom of my heart, I know I say it from time to time, but I truly mean it. Thank you so much. I set out to create the most beautiful and functional space possible to showcase this hobby. And I think I did exactly that. I want to know your thoughts though. Let me know down in the comments and thank you so much as always for sticking through all the way to the end. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.